This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and happy Friday. God bless you. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor of True Vine, NBC here in Houston, Texas, and I thank you so very much for joining us for the pastoral moment. This is the time we get to encourage and enlighten you with the Word of God, and today, church, I want to encourage you to please hit that subscribe button. Become a subscriber to this channel, please, and if you are subscribed to this channel, thank you so much for all your support. And if you want to become a member of this church, please look down in the description box and send your email to our email and we will get back with you. And also, if you want to send a donation to this church, please look down in the description box again and you will see our links to our donations, okay, where you can send your money. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, I want to encourage you, church, about trusting and depending on God in heart shattering times and heart shattering times trust and depending on god and heart shattering times man i know a few of my good friends who are my co-workers who are going through a lot right now man experiencing these heartbreaking events right now as they're going through it right now i mean trouble 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 deep trouble i mean just pain man heartache and it's just a lot on them. It's, it's, it can be overwhelming as humans. It can be trying as humans, you know? And so I just wanna encourage them. I wanna encourage you for those who are going through something right now um, and it's heart shattering and it's heartbreaking and it's just hard right now. It's so much trouble in your life. You know, you kind of feel like Job in a way. Just so much trouble. You lost something that was very close to you or someone that was very close to you and you're just going through it right now or someone that you know that's very close to you uh, may have received some bad news from the doctor. And so it's just hard right now. And so I want to encourage you just really quickly because it's all about the testing of our faith. It's all about that, the testing of our faith. Will you still depend on Jesus Christ? Will you still call on his name? Will you still worship him and praise him? Although all these things are overwhelming or piling on top of you, will you still worship him? Or will you turn away from him and say and neglect him? and cuss him. You know, what will you do? And so that's what God is asking right now. What, what are you going to do? And so it's about the testing of your faith. It's about maturity. He's going to, he's going to mature you in due season. And so let's look at chap, let's look at Luke chapter 22 verses 31 through 32. And I just preached on this not too long ago, but I love this verse because I want you to hear it because this is a fine example of what's going, what could be going on in your life right now. And it reads, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon. And now listen, the Lord is calling him um, Peter by Simon. This is, this is his real name. Jesus gave him the name Peter. He says, behold, Satan hath desired to what? Have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And so this is the same thing. This is what the enemy has to do. He has to ask. He has to come to God and ask because he, he doesn't have all power. He has limited power. And so God has all power. And so he has to ask God for permission in order to sift us like wheat. And remember, the enemy doesn't want anyone who doesn't have anything. He wants someone who is really, I mean, truly, truly, uh, uh, truly, a. Uh, 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 just someone that's going to really t help tear down his kingdom. He wants you. So if your faith is strong in Christ, you, you're doing your best to walk right and talk right, doing your best to live right for Christ. He wants you because you are an enemy to him, a true enemy to him. And so he wants you. He wants to tear you down and tear your faith up, away. And so he wants to take it away and, and, and really just run over you and shake you apart, right? Shake you apart. Shake you apart till you lose your faith. And so that's what he wants to do. He wants you to cuss God and die. And so he have desired to sift you, Peter, but I have prayed. And see, this is the blessing part right here. Jesus says, but I have prayed for thee. I have prayed for you, Peter, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thine brethren. And when you have come back to me, strengthen thine brother. I pray for you, Peter. And that's the thing Jesus has prayed for us, right? While we're going through these trials and tribulations, Jesus has prayed for us. When we go through certain things in life, these heartbreaking moments, Jesus has already prayed for us that we'll be restored and that we will come back to him. And then we have Matthew 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So all of you who labor and are heavy laden, I will what? Give you rest. So we got to learn to come to God, come to Christ and what? And lay it before him. Those who have heavy hearts right now, those who have heavy, heavy pain 
upon their chest. Um, the stroke, you know, you don't want to get into a stroke. You want to get into a heart attack. You don't have those things because you're so stressed. Just give it to Christ right now. Give it to Christ. You don't know why these things happen. You don't know what happened. However, give it to God. That's what he's saying. Give it to me. If you're heavy laden and I will give you rest, I'll give you peace. That's the passage all the time. I will take that away from you. I'll take that overwhelming thing that's on your back, that stress, that depression. I will remove it if you just give it to me. And then we have Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And so Paul is saying, for I consider that the sufferings, the sufferings that I'm going through right now, the pain that I'm going through, the afflictions that I'm going through right now, the heartbreak I'm going through right now, the trouble, the loss of loved ones, the things that I'm going through right now, the bad news from the doctor in this present time is not worth, it's not worth comparing with the glory. And that's what Paul, he kept his mind focused on Christ. He kept his mind stayed on Christ because he knew that his prize, that what he was really, what he was really pressing forward for, was worth going through everything, all the hell that he was going through here on earth. And so he was like, "This is nothing. I, I, I go through all this just so I can be with Christ one day, just so I can have peace one day, just so I can be with God for eternity one day." And that's what he's doing. He said, "This is nothing, man. This is nothing. This affliction, this this thing that I'm going through, being whipped several times." 30 times with the stripes. I mean, on and on. I mean, all these things, the shipwreck after shipwreck after shipwreck, stoning after stoning, all these things, beatings after beating, mockings after mockings. And so he was like neglected after neglected. So he's like, this is nothing for me, man. This is nothing. I go through all this just so, just so one day I could be with Jesus Christ, my Savior. And then we have 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. So we are always of good courage. This is every believer right here should be. This is how we should be. This is our interaction. This is our livelihood. This is our mentality. So we are always of good courage. No matter what the doctor said, no matter what happened, we are always of good courage. You know, we are always not saying we're not going to cry sometime, not saying that we're going to, we're not going to complain or this or that, but we are always of good courage, right? We know that while we are at home in the body, we are what? Absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord. From, for the, from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by what? Sight. And so we walk by faith. We believe in the unseen, right? We believe in what we have yet seen. Blessed are those who have yet seen, but still what? Believe. So we haven't seen Christ, but we still believe. No matter what, we walk in good courage. No matter the heartache, no matter the trials, no matter tribulations, no matter temptation, no matter what we go through, the, the um the, the horrible deaths that we're going to experience within our families, the close loved ones, no matter what we go through, the sicknesses, the pain, the stress, hey, the heart attacks, the strokes, the diabetes, oh no, no, I mean, all these things we can name. However, we walk always in of good courage. We always feel of good courage. We, we always dwell in good, with good courage because we are the believers of Christ. We should be, one day we'll be made just like him, right? And so that's our goal is to be like him. That's our goal is to walk like him. That's our goal to act like him and talk like him. So we have courage in Christ that he's going to do that. And that's what Paul is saying. And then here's another one by Apostle Paul when he says, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your what? In your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love, okay? So in our hearts, he's dwelling. In our minds, he's dwelling, right? And so that's what we think about. That's what we dream about. That's what we we think about. We, we want to uh, really be with all the time and want our hearts to dwell with all the time. So according to his riches of glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit. And yes, yes, we want him, we want him to grant us to be strengthened. We want to be strengthened, right? The power through his spirit and the inner being, the inner man, the inner man needs to be strengthened so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. How do you strengthen it? Reading the word of God. How do you strengthen it? Praying to Christ. How do you strengthen it? Worshiping him, praising him. How do you strengthen it? Loving Christ. And so grounded in love, being obedient in Christ, right? And then we have 1 Peter. Let's look at Brother Peter, Apostle Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. In this you rejoice, 
though now for a little while in this what we rejoice if necessary you have been grieved by what various trials so in various trials we what rejoice so that the test so that the tested genuous genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ so we rejoice in these things we rejoice in these trials we rejoice in these tribulations. We rejoice in these testings, right? Because it's the testing of our faith. But it's more precious than gold because gold perishes, right? That we may be tested in the fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor and revelation of God. So we're going to stay faithful. We're going to stay grounded. We're going to stay rooted in Christ because we have the gift of faith and we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that the same God that brought us out last time is going to bring us out even more more better this time right we're going to be smarter we're going to be more courageous we're going to be um uh, have more faith this time we're going to trust god more we're going to have more hope no matter what it feels like no matter what it seems like we're going to trust god regardless of what we're going through then we have first peter chapter 4 verses 12 and 13 beloved do not be surprised at fiery trials right when it comes upon you to test you there it is when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you so don't be surprised that it happens to you because you are a threat to the devil's kingdom so don't be surprised when these things happen to you because it's going to happen but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. And so that's the beauty of it, man. We rejoicing in these Christ. We, we, we rejoicing in it. We're going to suffer just like Christ suffered, right? We're going to suffer, but not that horrible, right? That was horrible death. But we're going to suffer just like he suffered, right? We're the same reenactment. We're going to suffer. We're going to suffer. So not in the exact way, but we're going to suffer, right? We suffer in, in this life through trials and tribulations. We're going to experience these things. But rejoice in it. Rejoice. Have joy in it. Have joy of the sufferings. Rejoice in the suffering. Rejoice in the pain. Rejoice in the heartache. Rejoice in the sadness. Rejoice when things are not going your way. Rejoice when you get fired. When we rejoice when you're in trouble. Rejoice when you get the bad, uh, uh, when you get the bad note from the doctor. Rejoice. 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 Rejoice because of that bad report. Rejoice. Give God praise. I'm telling you because it's glory soon will be revealed so rejoice in it while you can then we have romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39 who shall separate us from the love of christ shall tribulation distress persecution or famine or nakedness or peril a sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long paul say for your sake we are killed all day long he says so who shall separate us from the love that's a question who shall separate you from the love of Christ? That's a question you got to ask yourself. Shall, shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? What have you been through in life? All these things that you've been through, why now would you let us separate you from the love of Christ? Don't let it. No, stay with Christ. Stay in Christ. Stay dwelling. Stay going after Christ. No matter what, stay rooted in Christ. And so we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. That's who we are. Paul said we are killed all day long, especially in the first century, second century church. They were killed all day long as sheep for the slaughter. They were counted for the sheep. For the slaughter. They were murdered. They were martyred for Christ. OK, just because they believed. And, um, and we can't even do that. Man, we going through compared to them. We're experiencing hardly nothing right now. But we got to remember to stay in it. We got to stay in the race. We got to stay in the race for Christ no matter what we're going to experience here on earth. Stay in the race for Christ. Keep dwelling. Watch how Christ bring you out. Watch how Christ open that door for you. Watch how Christ make a way out of no way. Things happen that we don't understand. Something's going to happen in life that we don't understand. However, it's going to be okay. One day we'll understand it. One day, even if we don't understand it, one day... It's going to be okay. God is going to open that door for you, for you to walk through and watch your maturity in Christ. Watch your growth in Christ. Watch how he blesses you. Watch how you how you bring you out. And I'm telling you, the next time is going to be far better than the first time or the last time. And yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him 
who loved us. We are more than conquerors. We have the victory, right? Jesus gave us the victory when he died. And on the third day, he got up with all power in heaven and earth. So he gave us the victory. He gave us the victory over trials. He gave us victory over the bad reports that the doctor has given us. He gave us victory over cancer. He gave us victory over all these other things, all these other illnesses, all these other problems, all, the, all these other things like death on and on. He has given us victory, right? So rejoice in the victory. For I am persuaded that neither death, this is what I love about Paul. This is how I feel. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in our Lord. Christ Jesus. And so that's how I feel in my heart. And I pray, I pray church that you feel the same way. Don't let nothing separate you from the love of Christ. Things are going to happen. Things are not going to always go your way. Things, surprisingly, things are going to, people are going to die around us. I mean, things are just going to happen. Incidents are going to happen. Accidents are going to happen. Man, I'm telling you, sometimes your world feel upside down, but things are going to happen. But rejoice always in the Lord. Because I will let nothing separate me from the love of Christ. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so and rejoice in every issue that you're experiencing right now. And I'm telling you, don't be shocked if God does, if he turned it around. God will turn things around or the next time things will be far better off. I'm telling you, man, just keep depending on God. Just keep trusting in God. No matter how, no matter how heart shattering it, it may be, it may feel or how how you may be feeling right now, I'm telling you, rejoice in the Lord and everything will be okay. We've been made and do it for night, for joy comes in the morning light. God bless you, church. I thank you so much, man. I'm praying for all my coworkers. I'm praying for everybody, man, the church, everybody, True Vine, everybody. I'm praying for everybody that you'll come out of this thing soon and that God will mature you. He will grow you. He will perfect, perfect you. He will establish you. And I'm telling you, he will. He will, but after you have suffered a little while, that's when he'll do it, okay? I love you, church. Tune in Sunday for the word of God. Until next time, we are True Vine. We love you and we're praying for you. You want to know why? Because we are True Vine and we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign tvmbc or by mail at true vine missionary baptist church 1407 grove street houston texas 77020 thank you so much and have a blessed day